Now, are you having problems around your house or your office where you just can't get on the internet or some areas you can and some you can't or some are slow, some are fast and so on? Then this product from Strong will probably fix your issues. This is a mesh based system which basically covers your whole home and office with a big Wi-Fi bubble and because it's Wi-Fi 6 it should be really fast as well. On the front of the box it's got the manufacturer's name and the model number it says Wi-Fi Mesh Home Trio Pack AX3000 High Performance Mesh Wi-Fi 6 System. It works at 3000 megabits per second. You can see a picture of the three units on there. It's got some pictures with right and underneath say no buffering, no dead zones, up to 3600 square coverage. I'm not sure if that's feet or meters, I'm presuming it's feet. And it says up to 254 connected devices. On the sides and the back of the box, you've got information on there telling you what all the lights do and what all the sockets are on there. It shows you how to position it in your house. It tells you to download the app as well with a QR code, as well as all the other specifications and features. So inside the box, you've got some safety instructions and a EU declaration, which no one's gonna read. You've got the manual, which I do suggest you do read because it tells you how to set them up. You've got the ethernet cable there, which you will connect one of these nodes up to your main router or modem or home hub or whatever you call it. It's the bit what you get from your internet provider anyway. You connect it up to that. Then you've got three power cables, which came in plastic bags. You've got three nodes all together, as you can see, which also came in plastic bags. And then you've got the box, which came in a plastic bag as well. So they're not gonna win any awards from Greta. Let's put it that way with the packaging. So what is mesh? Well, mesh is basically a way of extending your internet signal around your house and basically make a bubble, as I like to put it. What you do is you get the main node, you plug it into your router access point, basically the bit where your internet comes into your house. You'll have something from BT or Sky, whoever your service provider is. You plug it into that. And then you have two other units which you position around your house, probably one at the bottom of the stairs in a hallway or a kitchen. And then the other probably on a landing or even a bedroom or if you're in something like a bungalow or a flat or an office, you can spread them out whichever you see fit, usually one centrally and then one a little bit further away. And what happens is all these devices work together. So when you connect to the internet, you don't have to put a different code in for each individual device. The same wireless code, same connection for all of them. So when you turn your smartphone on or your tablet or your laptop, it automatically connects to which is ever closest or fastest for it to do so which means that your signal's not having to go all the way from one end of your house all the way to the router. It actually goes to one of these access points or nodes or whatever you want to call them. And then the signal goes from there to the next one and to the next one and makes a, basically a big bubble around your house. I've seen it personally when we've set them up for people, people in like three story, four story or even five story mansions were un unable to get internet access because they've got thick walls and obviously due to the size of the property. You place these systems in and bam, they've got internet everywhere and even on the surrounding grounds around the building. So let's have a look at the units themselves. So all three are identical. The only difference is, is the Wi-Fi details on the bottom, but when you obviously set them up, you choose your own Wi-Fi details anyway, so it's not really needed that much, to be honest with you, uh, apart from doing the initial setup. So let's have a quick look at it then. So on the front, you've got uh, lights, you've got a PWR, which is power, you've got WPS, which is obviously for connecting up wirelessly to devices, you've got INT, which I'm guessing means internet, 2.4G wireless and 5G wireless. So there you go, you've got your two different signal ranges there. Uh, on the side, you've got venting holes, which is built into the design, and it's the same on both sides. You've also got a QR code on the one side as well. On the back side, you've got more vents as well. You've got where your power cable goes. Bear in mind the power cable, we've measured that, it is one and a half meters long, so 150 centimeters. Would have preferred two meters, to be honest with you, uh, because some people like to put things like these on top of tall units, um, where obviously you're gonna struggle uh, with a one and a half meter cable. You've got an on and off power button. You've got a reset hole. So you'd have to put like a pin or a needle or something like that in there just to reset it. WPS pairing button. You've also got the WAN connection. That's where you would plug in the cable, the ethernet cable, which is also one and a half meters long from this. 
into your main router. Bear in mind, you only do that on one of the devices. So you'd plug that into your router. Um, so this then gets internet signal and shares it with the other devices. And then you've also got two LAN connections. So not only can you connect to this device wirelessly, you can connect up to each of the nodes with cables as well. So if you've got a PC which doesn't have a wireless um, connection on it, you can use an Ethernet cable and plug it directly into one of the nodes uh, or a PlayStation or anything like that. You can connect up with a cable like you would a traditional router or modem. Otherwise, on the bottom, you've got all your codes and details, and it does say the default username and password is admin and admin, which you will or I would advise you to change in the software, which will show you how it works in a few minutes. Okay, so let's set these up. I'm gonna follow the instructions manual exactly as it said. So number one is we get obviously the unit itself. We plug the power cable in the back, which goes there. So let me get the power cable. Obviously you need to plug the other end of the power cable into a power socket. And then you get your ethernet cable. I'm using a slightly different one than the one they supplied because the distance between our access point in the wall and this desk is more than one and a half meters. And then you basically plug that cable into the one what says WAN. And then obviously you need to press the power button unless it's already powered on. I don't know, I think I must've switched it off. You press the power button. There we go. And the lights for the power has just come on. Then after a few minutes, hopefully, or even seconds, the internet light should come on as well as a few of the others. So we've just got to wait for those to come on before we move on to the next step. Okay, as you can see now, the power light is on, internet light, 2G and 5G is also on as well. Uh, the WPS light won't come on, that's only if you press that button on the back. What we have to do now is get your smart device, mobile phone or tablet, go into your settings and then Wi-Fi. Obviously it may differ depending on your phone. Now it should find lots of different devices, obviously depending on where you are, uh, to connect up to and you need to connect it up to the strong box so depending on yours it might be called slightly different but the basics is you can see it here strong so if I click on that it's then going to ask for the password you then type the password in which is on the bottom of the box so you can see it uh, just over here so I've got to type that in and then that will connect up to that box once you've typed your code in, press join, it should say you're connected with either a tick or something similar, just to say that you're actually connected to that box. So now, this and this is basically set up. Uh, now you need to set up the other nodes, and obviously there are advanced options as well. And again, as I said, we are following the instruction manual, which is very easy. There's no real writing in it as such. It's all picture diagrams, so no matter what nationality you are, what language you speak, or even if you can or not read or write, you should be able to get the gist of how to do it. So now what we have to do is set up the second node so you get your second node which we're going to call this one we're going to plug that in with obviously another power cable and obviously make sure that's plugged into a power socket plug it in make sure it's turned on by pressing the power button on the back and again you should get the little light there now that was step three. Step four is now that we have to press the WPS button on the back of this one and that one as well. And what will happen, hopefully, is the WPS light should flash on both of these devices. So I'll do it on this one first. There you go, so you can see WPS, and then I'll press it on this one. And then hopefully what that should do is then allow both of these to talk to each other with ease, or at least that's the theory. Usually WPS things can take anywhere from 10 seconds, sometimes up to several minutes for them to talk to each other and connect up. So we've just got to wait a few seconds for that to actually happen. Okay, now you can see that all five lights are lit up, or at least some of them may be flickering a little bit, depending on if it's picking up data from your device you connected up. But in the basics, you should find the Wi-Fi light and the internet light and the power and then the 2.4G and the 5G connection lights all lit up. That means those two nodes are now working together. Now to set the third one up, it's exactly the same story as with, with the second one. 
you get your power cable, plug it in, press the power button on the back, you'll get your green light, give it a few seconds, and then press the WPS button on the first node, that's your main one. Again, it should start flashing, and then you do it on the third one. There you go, and you can see that one's flashing. So now those will go through the process of connecting. If you do buy additional nodes, you can to extend your wireless range even further. It's going to be basically the same story, adding more on. You just press, basically make sure they're both powered on, press the WPS on the back of the one, then the other, and then they should start talking to each other. And then all the lights, after a little while, just take two or three minutes, will all come on and then it'll be all up and running. Okay, so as you can see, all three nodes are now physically set up, or at least with their default configuration, which I highly recommend you do do, which is the last step. Okay, this would be, well, on the manual number nine, but they don't actually name it number nine. You can either change the details by going to uh, a specific web address, which is written in the manual, as you can see just there, uh, just there, there we go. And you can do that on any machine, basically, or you can use it, do it via the app. Okay, so you can download the app from the app store. Once you've got it downloaded, it will look something like this. It'll ask you for the username and password. The default username and password for this is admin admin. It's written on the bottom if you're not sure. But again, I suggest you change that because if anyone obviously comes round to your house or office, they could look at the bottom and go, oh, that's a default um, settings, and we can obviously change it and they could lock you out. So once you put your details in, you just press sign in, and you're on their settings page. It says add a new node, so you can go and add an extra node to the net network, or do the way I've just showed you how to do by do using the WPS button. You can see attach devices, so you can see the devices what are connected. That's actually my phone at the moment because it's the only thing we've got connected. You've got my network, so it tells you about the main controller and then what they call agents. I call them nodes, but again, different places call them different things. So pretty much the same thing though. Uh, you've got Wi-Fi settings. This is where you can actually go in and change the Wi-Fi, uh, basically the name of the device. So when you're connecting up, it comes up, oh, this is, for example, normally it'll say BT router or whatever it is, and normally theirs is strong and then the model number. You can actually change that to something else, whatever you want. You call, could call it my router 1234 or whatever, as well as create your own password. Obviously, I make sure you write that password down, otherwise, you've got to reset the units all the way up by putting a pin or a paper clip or something in the back and going through resetting them all. So, again, you change your details, then you can press save. You've also got a guest Wi-Fi. Now you can set that up, so you've got actually two Wi-Fi signals coming out of these devices. So let's just say you're in an office, for example, and you want guests, so people who come round to connect, be able to connect to the internet, but they don't want to, you don't want them to connect up to like uh, all your printers and all your servers and stuff like that. Well, you can create a guest network on there and use a different um, ID, and password. It's a bit like when you go to a hotel and it asks you to sign into the guest one, which is usually free, and then they usually have a paid for one or something along that lines. You have the option, obviously you don't have the option of paying on here or getting them to pay, but at least you have the option of the guest logging in uh, and on a different network name, which is not going to conflict with the rest of your devices in the building, which is really good. And you can set times and how long those codes are uh, accessible and so forth. You've got Wi-Fi schedule as well, so you can turn the Wi-Fi on and off at specific times. So if you've got kids at night, for example, trying to get on at two o'clock in the morning to play on the Xbox or the PlayStation or whatever it is, then you can basically tell it to turn the Wi-Fi off so they can't. Um, so unless you've got really clever kids and they decide, oh, I'm going to plug a cable in, uh, but that's another story. You've got LED control, so you can basically uh, adjust the LEDs on the front of it and everything. You've got LAN settings as well, so again, a lot of this you're not going to need to change, but if you want to, you can. You've also got internet settings on there as well. Again, you're probably not going to need to do anything like that, but it's PPOE, you've got DHCP and static as well, if you needed to. 
and you've got mesh restart, system settings, about, and logout. So you've got quite a few different options on there you can go through and change if needs. And it's pretty straightforward, not lots of sub menus hidden behind other things. It's pretty straightforward. There it is. But I would suggest you do change the usernames and passwords, which the uh, that's going to be under system settings. You can see set administrator username and password. You've ticked that box, create a new password and change it away from admin, admin, because if anyone ever came into your building or gone to a computer, they could change the details on there and then you won't be able to access them. But otherwise, that's pretty much it. The devices do what they stay. Obviously, you don't have to position them next to each other like that. That's not gonna really do any um, advantage for you. As we showed in the previous clip, uh, you basically position these apart. So the first one, which is connected to the router, will obviously, with a cable, will be next to the router, uh, quite obviously. And then the other ones are only got power cables in. So you can position them anywhere around your home, office, business. You want, uh, I suggest, uh, one of them in a sort of a central location and one a little bit further away, or you do it in sort of a... a triangle formation so you've got one at one corner one at another corner and then uh, another one at the rear wall of the building really you can move them around and see how they work best for you but basic says you should be able to get internet coverage pretty much everywhere in your building and if you have got a really obscenely big building you can buy extra nodes to cover that as well and obviously this is wi-fi 6 I'm not going to go into the details about Wi-Fi 6, you can look that up, but in basics, that's really good, fast internet, and it's going to make the connection really good. And if you've got really fast, like virgin internet, for example, in the UK, Gigabit internet, it's going to be able to cope with all that without any issue. I hope you enjoyed this video and know I did. Why not check out one of our other videos by clicking this box up here, or this one just down here. Otherwise, you can give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe, comment below, let us know what you think, and we'll see you next time.